I'm being forcibly removed from the building again of a public lobby, so. So, if you want to take off that gun and badge, I'm happy to scrap with you one day. You want to do it, you let's do it. Let me know, buddy. That is not a crime, and you're telling me to get out of my vehicle. Do you know where Lieutenant Mingus is right now? So, no, he's not in the building? I'm not. What do you know? I'm not telling you nothing else until I find out who's driving that vehicle. You not a supervisor, bro. I need somebody higher than you right now. I didn't break the law. I'm not gonna be found guilty of anything. This is a waste of time. If you guys wanna know who I am, I'll tell you who I am. Okay. You wanna know what I'm doing here? I'll tell you what I'm doing here. Uh, if you didn't know, I went to the police academy and they kicked me out. That's my purse! I don't know you! Spit me on my face right now! She spit in my face! Today's video takes us to the courtrooms located in Taylor, Michigan, where we find our good friend, Broken Teeth Josh, as he tells the judge he just wants to be left alone and that he doesn't feel safe without his camera recording. Oh my goodness, that's going to be a problem, Josh, because they don't allow recording devices in the court of law. But not to worry, Josh will figure something out. Sit back, watch, and <laughs> enjoy. Okay, right, Mr. Uh, People, People versus Lanto. Your Honor, James Kaczynski, um, I, I'm asking the court right now if I could withdraw on this matter. Uh, I don't think I, uh, I could adequately rep help Mr. Lanto in his legal arguments because I'm not familiar with, with the issues in it. And... Um, I'm just asking the court if I can withdraw. All right. And uh, Mr. Lanto, then um, I can um, I can appoint a uh, a different uh, court appointed attorney. Well, I I just want to clarify and make sure I'm going to be able to speak for myself in 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 the court. I don't want anybody speaking for me. As a matter of fact, I mean that the. the all I really want is to be left alone. So that's uh, first and foremost. And then as far as an audio only recording, I was told that there is an objection to the audio only recording. And like, I'd like to know, I don't feel safe without a recording. So is there any, uh, any reasonable objection? So let's take a moment to analyze what's happened here. Josh's court appointed attorney wants to withdraw from the case and then Joshua wants to speak for himself. Well, that's all good and well, Josh, but you know what they say about a uh, someone who represents themselves in court, they have a fool for a client. Mm. You know, Josh, you look worse than you did here in your arrest photo. You have really dropped a lot of weight, man. You have to stop smoking that stuff. Can't you see it's ruining your life, Josh? Well, first off, you can't record in the courts of law. They're already, if you'd like a transcript, Everything is already being recorded by my, my, my court recorder. And I can assure you that there's no, the, the, the recording device is on and it records and that's what she does. That's, she uh, records everything. So if you'd like a transcript of that after the proceedings, you're more than welcome well, to I've been, order a transcript. So. I've been told that before. And then when it comes to getting the transcripts, I still am waiting for the transcripts when I was told that in the past. So well, like I, I said, I don't, feel, I don't, I don't I feel safe talking. without a report. I know that you're not talking about the 23rd District Court because I know if you've ordered a transcript from my court, um, those always come, those are always uh, forthcoming. I've never had to deny anybody a transcript. So well, um, if, if, if that happened to you in another court, then I suggest that you call the State Bar of Michigan and report that court because obviously they're not doing things correctly. Uh, but, well, yeah, I, uh, I have no desire to do that. All I want is to have fair and meaningful hearings. And well, I mean, first off, sure. I simply just like to be left alone. Oh, poor Josh just wants to be left alone. Do you need a safe space, sweetheart? Do you need your mommy? Do you need some warm milk and some chocolate chip cookies? Is that's what's wrong with you, you little boy? But other than well, that, I mean, well, I get fair. And I, get, I get that, but obviously... Uh, you uh, had an interaction with somebody where they are alleging that because um, today's date and time set for the arraignment. So I, I want to make sure that you understand. I need the phone. Um, the uh, on the date and time in question, it is alleged that because first let me let me do the arraignment part because you, you you need to let I need to let you know 
what exactly you're being charged with, all right? So you, you say you want to be left alone, but they, they are claiming that there was an interaction. Now, first off, you do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You also have the right to an attorney if you've got a 411 will be appointed to you by the court at public expense. Now, it is alleged that on November the 17th of 2022, while in the city of Taylor, that you violated city ordinance 32-31 which is a, um, a charge commonly known as interfering with the uh, police authority. That is a misdemeanor punishable by 93 days in jail and or up to $500 in fines. I told Josh a long time ago, if he stayed out of trouble and didn't do anything stupid, I wouldn't make any more videos about him. And I haven't up until just now because Josh you just can't seem to stay out of trouble man I thought you had a job I thought you were a regular square man a nine to five guy what happened man so as to that charge how do you plead guilty or not guilty well first uh, can I just make a few clarifications well, first, uh, this, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna caution you that anything you say can and will be used against you so I understand to, as to guilty or not guilty, that's just the only question I'm asking right now. Well, in order to say guilty or, or not guilty, or you, you, or you can stand, or you can stand mute, which means I'm not saying anything, and then I will enter a plea of not guilty for you, so that you don't have okay. to say anything, and it automatically goes to not guilty. So are you, well, you pleading guilty, not guilty, or standing mute? Well, before I make a plea, you stated that I have the right to be informed of the cause and nature of the charges, correct? Right, which is what I just what is what I just uh, what, I, what I just told you. I just told you what the charge was. Okay, and you're stating that it's based on an interaction. So my guess is that you have no firsthand knowledge of anything that happened. Well, I'm not stating anything. All I'm telling you is what they what the what the people of the city of Taylor have charged you with. They have charged you with a violation of city ordinance three two dash three one. That that ordinance is commonly known as by name as interfering with police authority. I'm not, I'm not putting any allegations. I'm not say, stating any facts. I'm merely stating what has happened to get this case into my court. That's it. Right. I do apologize, Your Honor, but Broken Teeth Josh is brain dead. Yeah, because he smokes that stuff all the time. I can't say what it is, but it's in print here. Yeah, oh, he looks horrible. Man, he has lost a lot of weight since I last saw him. Yeah, well, we know what, you do that stuff and it fries your brain. So like I said, Your Honor, I'll have to apologize for him. He won't do it himself. You, you sound awfully fair to this point, and I certainly appreciate that. Because, yeah, and just to be specific, it's not the people of the city of Taylor. It's David Jones, and then I don't know the name of the prosecutor. And I just want to make sure that the prosecutor is aware of, you know, uh, Section 241, Section 242, Title 18, deprivation of rights under color of law. I want to know if they're aware of that. Well, first off, that's a separate, what you're talking about is civil, is civil type cases. Well, um, it's also so, criminal. So what I'm saying is, in this matter, the matter that is before me, okay, is a misdemeanor matter where you are being, it is alleged that you violated an ordinance of the city of Taylor. The people of the city of Taylor, through their attorney, have acted to bring a case against you. So the only right. thing and what I can do right now is ask you are, you, are you pleading guilty, not guilty, or standing mute? Can I have the name of that prosecutor that's bringing the charges? Because I've had in another case where a prosecutor stated uh, at a uh, three proceedings away from the arraignment, she stated that after reviewing the video. Right. So, and sir, the I'm going to take, listen, I'm going to take your response as being non-responsive. This reminds me of the movie My Cousin Vinny, where Fred Gwynn played the judge and Joe Pesci was an attorney, and he couldn't seem to understand how he should plead his clients, guilty or not guilty. And that's the same thing with our good friend Josh here. He can't understand what the judge is asking him. Are you guilty or are you not guilty? It's one of the two, and Josh wants to go into this long dissertation. By the way, here's a picture of Josh from a few years ago. Not even a few years ago, just maybe about 18 months ago. And look how much weight he's lost. He's screwing up his life. Man, your life is in the toilet, bro. Which is well, I being guilty or not guilty, so I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty for you. I object right. to that. I object to that. Okay, then, then, then are you guilty or not guilty? 
or standing well, mute? Those, those are the three things we got going on right now. Well, I first so, have to clarify. You, you did say that I was so presuming. I have to clarify anything, sir. I'm being very fair with you. And right now, you're, you're, you're basically splitting legal hairs. Right now, the only thing that I have jurisdiction over is doing an arraignment. Nothing, well, more, still, nothing more can happen in this case until the arraignment happens. And the arraignment well, is whether or not you plead guilty or not guilty. And if you're unresponsive to that question, then I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty for you so that I can protect your constitutional rights because a lot of people don't know that they should. So that's why I, I enter a plea of not guilty for people who don't really know how to answer the question. So that way they're not getting, no, no one's going to be bamboozled or said that, well, you, but you said guilty and you didn't know what was going on. I don't want that to happen. I say that you're either going to plead guilty, not guilty, or if someone is unresponsive to that question, then I automatically just enter a plea of not guilty for them so that they can preserve all of their rights to a trial and everything else without having been forced to be pleading guilty. So by you saying everything else, that's, that's all well and good, but it's not the time and place for it. For anyone familiar with Mr. Mackey on South Park, you'll have to agree with me that drugs are bad, okay? That's right, Josh. Drugs are very, very bad, okay? See, that's just the problem is there's a time and place for everything in the, in the matter of procedures, of course. And when you just start trying to jump the gun and go right from zero to, to 60, that's not how it works. There's a, there's a step in process, and everything has to go in that process. And the process today is, today is an arraignment. It's just an arraignment where I'm telling the individual who is alleged to be a defendant what the, what the allegations are. And the allegation is that you violated a city ordinance, and that city ordinance is basically um, one commonly known as interfering with the police authority. So that's, that's it's, it, and, and letting you know what the charge is and when you let you know what the penalty for it is and, and I've already okay. stated so again I'm going to ask you guilty or not guilty well I certainly appreciate the explanation it seemed like you were getting a little angry I don't know I I'm mean getting, is it, I'm not getting angry sir but I have but when I'm but I'm literally stating that this isn't this no, nobody's trying to bamboozle you or anything like that I don't know what happened in some other court and everything that you want to do you can still do I just need to know if, if you're pleading guilty or not guilty. And if you're well, not answering I, that question, if you're not answering that question, then I'll enter a plea of not guilty for you so that it preserves all of your constitutional rights and the case still moves forward. Is it possible that someone could really be this stupid or is this all an act? I don't know. But the judges ask him how many times are you guilty or not guilty? And Josh still can't answer. Josh, you know there's seriously something wrong with you. You know that, don't you? Right. You said we're, we're interested in preserving my constitutional rights, correct? That is correct. That is correct. And then, and then one of and those... So listen, what I'm saying is everything that you're saying can be used against you. If you think that you have a motion to dismiss, that's something that you can do, but that's when the case is already going to the next, next stage, which is... Well, like I'm I said, I... I'm not guilty for you. Well, like I said, I would just prefer to be left alone and not have to come back at all. And I, then if we're not going to do that, then I definitely like to have fair and meaningful hearings. And my concern is we've got a police officer and we've got a prosecutor, both are state actors, and they're trying to bring charges against me. And I just want to know, because you are a judge and you are another state actor, am I going to get a fair and meaningful hearing here? And I'm telling you that I keep right here. Hang on one second. Right and I'm... Copy, and I, copy of my, sir, please. I have not cut you off at any point. Please don't just cut me off. This is a copy of my oath of office. And so why do I keep it here? Because it constantly reminds me that what am I going to do? I am here to, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. Well, now there you have it, Josh. He has his oath of office right there, and he just read it to you. Do you think you could plead guilty or not guilty now? Most likely not. Let's find out. So I take that very seriously. My son uh, serves in the Marines. He takes his, his duty to uphold the Constitution seriously. So if, you're, if you are implying that I am not going to uphold the Constitution or that I am going to take an oath and not be true to my oath, then I take offense to it. So if you, if, you say, if you sense any sort of anger, there's no anger. The only thing I'm telling you is that 
you are implying that I somehow am an oath breaker. And I am well, not. I didn't. So, I, I didn't. That's, that's that. exactly what that's exactly. I swore an oath to the Constitution that I put my hand on the Bible and swore to. And I'm telling you, I don't break my oath. Okay, so would you now, agree you're with implying that you're not going to get a fair hearing? That's my job is to make sure well, that, would... that, that fairness happens, that due process happens. And so, well, I do... I, so I'm asking you, just as a matter of course, because this is the, the stage that we're at, is, is an arraignment. Are you pleading guilty or not guilty? Well, you just or said, if you don't, or if you're not responding to that question, I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf, as you, and I'll find you standing mute to the question. Well, I object to anybody making a plea on my behalf, and I oh, just well, wanted. I'm not. I'm not making a plea. I'm just finding you. I'm just. I'm just entering. A, I'm just saying that you're not. That you are right now presumed not to be guilty because that's just your constitutional right. To be okay. presumed not guilty. This could be the video I posted where Josh was arrested for interfering with cops. This could be the one right here. Because he went right up to the cops who were running radar that day and he was complaining about all the people who were stopped for speeding. And then he was summarily arrested right after that. So, Josh, you're in court today because of your own stupidity. You want to be a cop watcher and play games. This is what happens, bro. And then I'm that means that your constitutional right. I'm not. I'm not entering a plea for you. I'm just. I'm just listing you as somebody who is right now not guilty because the okay. Constitution says you are to be presumed not guilty until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So I'm not and entering then, a plea for you. I am just merely stating that this individual is to be treated as someone who is not guilty. Okay, and then, so if I'm presumed innocent, I'm presumed innocent of all the elements of the charge, correct? No, you are presumed innocent until proven guilty. And you haven't had right. a trial no. yet. That's your other constitutional but, right. So well, like yeah. The, well, trial, we just set this for a trial. Well, we just said that I'm presumed innocent until proven guilty. And then my question was, am I presumed innocent of all the elements of the charge? And I didn't get an answer to that because that's a yes or no. Well, first off, I don't, I don't, I don't need to answer questions, nor am I going to give legal advice because that would be more legal advice that you would talk about with your attorney. And when I'm wearing the robes, I can't give legal advice to either side. I'm more like a referee. I can throw a penalty flag. I can call a whistle for a violation of a rule that I see one side doing or the other side doing. But I can't coach either team. I don't know what happened to Josh. He seemed to have a promising career for a long time. He could have done anything he wanted to. I don't know, man. Sometimes people just take the downward spiral in life and they never recover from it. He's got a couple kids he doesn't see and doesn't take care of. Yeah, his life has been tragic, man. But you know what? You're still alive. Why don't you do something positive and be a good father for a change, man? Well, I certainly so appreciate you being fair. Yeah, because so the answer cause so the answer to your question is I can't answer your question because that would then be giving you legal advice, and I'm not allowed to give either side legal advice. Okay, because in this in this particular case, there are crimes that occurred, but it, the crimes that occurred were the people that put their hands on somebody that had no desire to be uh, having somebody put their hands on them and then binding them and then uh, placing them in the back of a gang mobile and then taking them to a cage. That's the that's the victim in this case. And the victim, okay, well, if the victim is. If the victim is going to be the city of Taylor and it's going to be presided over by a judge that is paid by the city of Taylor with a police officer that's bringing the charges with the help of an attorney. And then they don't know what 241 or Section 241 Title 18 conspiracy to violate my rights. Then I have serious concerns for the fairness and the meaningfulness of this of these proceedings. And I think okay, that's well, very I, reasonable. I am, a, I am a judge of the, of the 23rd District Court of the state of Michigan. It's located in the city of Taylor, but I, but I am not, I don't work for the city of Taylor. But do you see so, my, do you, do you see my concern for my safety? Josh, if I were you, and I'm so glad I'm not, I would shut up. You could be found in contempt of court, buddy, and you could be hauled in and serve some time in the slammer. Of course, maybe that's what you want. Maybe you're curious as to why they call it the pokey. Bubba and the boys be happy to show you. I, I absolutely, except for the fact is, I'm presiding over the whole case, and I'm going to make sure everybody has due process. Everybody has the, the same fairness to bring bring the uh, bring their case 
and uh, to make sure that they can cross-examine witnesses and make sure everything is reported by my, my, my recorder who also has sworn an oath and I find her, but never have broken her oath either. And so I'm just telling you, I'm gonna be doing my job and my job is to defend the constitution and I will be doing so. So as of today, it was uh, set for it was set for arraignment. I have entered a I have entered uh, the uh, a not guilty uh, as to your as to the charges against you. And right now, I can do one of two things. One, I can set this up for a pretrial. The pretrial is is, a, is something that I always afford the parties where they can talk to one another if they want to work something out. I have no problem with the constitutional right to enter into contracts and to do things like that. Or I can just set up for a jury trial or bench trial right now. If you want to forego any of that and say, look, I really have nothing to discuss with them. I'll just take, I'll just like to go to trial. So would you like to meet with the prosecutor? Well, in which case I will set this up for a settlement conference date where the two of you can discuss the matter. Or I can just set this for a jury trial or bench trial right now. Well, I mean, I, I, I do have a couple of objections to that because. This is what happens when you use drugs on a regular basis. You just can't comprehend what's being said to you. The judge asked you very clearly, do you want a pre-trial or you just want to go to a jury trial? And you want to dance around the question. You can't answer a question. You just can't, Josh. This is why your life is all effed up. I, I'm being labeled and, and called the defendant here. And what I'd like to be called is the victim. And what I'd like to do is if oh, this is a fair... If this is a fair Listen. proceeding, then that, that prosecutor, as long as we're going around and throwing out suspe uh, suspicions and alleging crimes, I'm going to allege them of the crime of uh, uh, the Department of Justice, Section 241, 242, Title 18, which is deprivation of rights under color of law. And I take serious okay. issue with people uh, uh, acting like criminals. Okay, so what I'm saying is this. One, I don't have jurisdiction to take your case. Two, you're citing to federal law. Three, you would have to file that in the federal court. And you know, and all of those things are available to you. You have the right to, to do so and have the court, the proper court, determine that. All right. So um, what I'm saying is this is a city ordinance, and I have I have jurisdiction over state cases and over city cases, misdemeanors, and I don't have, and when you're stating when you're stating, I don't have the jurisdiction to hear. That doesn't mean that you can't bring that case in the proper court. All I'm saying is from now on, I'm just going to refer to you as Mr. Lanto. If you prefer not to be referred to as the defendant, then I'll, I'll refer to you as Mr. Lanto. I have a better idea, Your Honor. Just refer to him as brain dead, broken teeth, dead beat Josh. Yeah, because he doesn't take care of his kids, that's for sure. The prosecutor is Mr. Dave Greco, and I'll refer to him as Mr. Greco. And that way okay. everyone will just uh, refer to one another in their generally names. But what yeah, I'm well, asking so, you right now is, would you like me to set this for a settlement conference at a later date, or would you like to set this for a bench or jury trial? Well, I'm willing. I'm willing to forego any uh, any intention of uh, criminal charges against the prosecutor if they're willing to just dismiss this now and leave okay, me alone. So, so well, here's the thing: is is I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to look at the case and think about it, and not have to not have to. I I, I made sure that you didn't have to take a guilty plea right off the cuff without having to think about it. So I'll set this I would for a settlement conference. I'll set I would this for a settlement conference. And everyone can come back at that settlement conference. And if there's, okay, no if there's a resolution then, then there's a resolution. If there's not a resolution, then I'll set it for, I'll ask if you want a bench trial or jury trial because that's your constitutional right. And I just need to know which one you're choosing. So. All right. Outstanding, outstanding, because I'd like to talk to this uh, prosecutor who I suspect is a criminal at this time. And I would like well, to. First, uh, off, first off, I'm going to caution you, Mr. Lanto. I'm going to caution you and I'm going to caution you once. And the next time it happens, I will hold you in contempt because I will hold anybody in contempt. I do not run a Jerry Springer show. It's funny you would mention that, Your Honor, because that's what Josh washes all day long. Judge Jerry Springer. Between that and YouTube videos, that's the extent of his legal knowledge. Oh, yes, it is. I do not run a Jerry Springer show where the litigants are going to use words and things and call each other names. If you're going to refer, I'm not referring to you as an offendant. I rightfully could. Anybody who has charges brought against them is, for a moment, known as an offendant. 
If you look at a dictionary and look up defendant, that's what it says. But you prefer not to be called a defendant, and I and I acknowledge that, and I'm going to call you Mr. Lanto. You are not. Oh, sure. Thank you. Every, you are not, and I repeat, not until you are proven, until you prove otherwise in a court of law beyond a reasonable doubt. You are not to call any other litigant a criminal. Sure, sure. And, uh, and well, well, I've been I've so, been alleged to be a so criminal. While, so while so while we will make I will make sure that the proper respect is is given to you. I'm going to ask the same of you. So you will refer to it, Mr. Greco as either Mr. Greco or as the prosecutor. But you're not going to call any other litigant or any other witness or anybody else a criminal unless they actually have a criminal record or they have been proven to be a criminal in a court of law by a, by a jury of their peers. You tell him, Your Honor. You hold him in contempt to court because he's just a jack wagon. Look at him. That's when he was somebody. Now he's a nobody. Yeah, and for the record, I called him a suspected criminal. Well, I'm very careful. I'm very careful with my words. In again, court. again, you're, you're splitting hairs, and I'm just telling you right now. I'm giving you one heads up, and I don't know about I, any kind of Jerry, Jerry, Jerry type Jerry Springer stuff, where there's going to be finger pointing, chair throwing, and name calling. Everyone well, I did. I, I did do a cop watch karaoke. Which is, okay, well, right. up, which is probably what led up. Which is probably what led up. All right, so I'm going to set this for a settlement conference. All of your contact information is correct, so we I can make sure that due process is afforded under the Constitution, and I'm getting I'm mailing uh, notices out to the proper uh, spot, and that's the Cloverdale address. Uh, no, and at this time I don't feel safe giving an address, but I'll give you a phone number or an email address that I can be contacted by because I do want to participate in the settlement conference. Well, right, but I also need to, I'm, I'm required by law to mail it out to your last known address. So if, if this address is something that you will still receive, all I'm saying is I already have an address. I don't, yeah, I'm no, in, in, it's still current. Is it still in the act, in the, no, in the activism that I do, it's, it's important to stay on the move because I have people that try to retaliate against me and do violent things to me. Oh, Josh, say it isn't so. People want to retaliate against you and do violent things to you? Who would want to do that? Josh, I thought you were everybody's friend. I thought you had friends in the frauditing community as well to look out for you. What happened to your good buddies, Franken and MCC and all the rest of those guys you used to hang out with? They don't hang out with you anymore? What happened? Did Franken kick you out of the house? I know you were staying there for a while with him. Yeah, you're really going downhill fast, Josh. I'm telling you. So I prefer uh, not well, to. Well, then that's, that's up to you. That's up to you to go to the. Uh, it is incumbent upon you to go to the post office and make sure that they have your forwarding address. I'm going to mail. My, my clerk is going to mail it out to the Cloverdale address. And if you didn't put a forwarding on there, well, that's that's between you and the uh, post office. Uh, we well, don't send out the... emails. We don't send out emails um, as notice, but. And we don't make phone calls about to let people know when the notice is. We use the mail system because that's the only thing that's tangible and can actually be proven. Why? Because you can see that you put something in the mail. You can actually see that it's been in the mail because it's posted. So Yeah, is it going to be certified? Because that's the only way really to prove that somebody got it. No, it's not. And we don't have to start it by certified mail under the court rule. And the court rules already been ruled to be part of the Constitution, and it's already been uh, ruled as being constitutionally proper under due process of the Constitution. So I'm going to mail it to your last known address. If you have some sort of change of address, that's between you and the uh, Postal Service. All right. So we're going to set oh, yeah, this for a it, conference date. It'll be uh, sometime in the uh, in the new year, sometime in January, and we'll see everybody then. Okay. I certainly appreciate you being fair. That's, that's what I swore to do. That's what I always do. Have a good day. Thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. I do believe broken brain, broken teeth, deadbeat dad, meth head Josh will be getting a few days in the pokey. At least we can hope for that anyway. Yeah, Josh. Mm, at least you'll have three hots and a cot, man. It beats whatever you're doing right now. That guy has lost a lot of weight, though, man. He does not look well at all. But at any rate, if you enjoy watching idiots, imbeciles, and morons on my channel, please subscribe. <laughs> As always, thanks so much for stopping by, Broken Brain Josh. Cheers to that.